Hey, it is Bree here. I'm super excited to have you here. Happy Friday. Today we're going to be talking about planning to be healthy, how to create a plan, ways to really stick to it, and why it's so important. So again, my name is Bree. I'm the registered nurse and certified health coach of hippydippymom.com. I am here to help you and your loved ones have more energy, experience fewer sick days, and live your best life. So let's get to it. First, no matter where you're watching this, please like, follow, subscribe, all the things. <laughs> this is going on Facebook and Instagram and will eventually be on YouTube as well. Um, so let's start by getting out a piece of paper because what I found is that many, many, many studies show that when we write down our goals, we actually increase our rate of success by 80%. That's huge. So get out a piece of paper. Um, you know, I don't care if it's a post-it or whatever, you can put it into something um, kind of more permanent later or come back to the video. And the first thing I want you to write at the very, very top is what do you want your life to look like when you're 80, 90, 100 years old? Um, so I'll share my, my vision for myself when I'm old. I want to have energy, as much energy as I have now. I want to have an amazing memory. I want to remember myself and my daughter and all my family and friends. Um, I want to be sassy. <laughs> I love those sassy elderly people. So that is definitely um, a goal of mine. Um, I don't want to be on any medication. I don't um, want to have any chronic illness. You know, no matter if you think that you can actually reach that goal or not, um, write it down. Even if you think that it's something that's not achievable, write it down because most likely it is something that's achievable. So write down whatever your wildest dreams are of what you want your life to look like when you're um, much, much older. Because what we're doing today, our health when we're 80, 90, and 100 will reflect what we're doing today. Um, so then that will, you know, having that vision will then help us know what we need to do now and, you know, in the coming years in order to reach that goal. Um, so that is the next step is to write down the smaller goals to kind of backtrack from when we're 80, 90, and 100 and think about what we need to be doing now every month, every week, every day. Um, in order to achieve whatever you wrote down for your later in life health and wellness goals. Um, so let's see some examples of some monthly um, smaller goals that you could write down would be maybe like going to the gym eight times a month or, you know, getting some, some kind of, um, you know, really good workout in eight times a month, a workout where you're breaking a sweat and getting your heart rate up. Those are the really beneficial types of workouts. Um, a weekly goal could be, um, you know, I'm going to meditate three times a week, or I'm going to, um, you know, take a day off from work and go do something that I enjoy, or I'm going to have a girl's night, like go out to dinner and drinks with the girls one night a week, because even though, you know, eating out and drinks aren't healthy, that social interaction and laughing and having those people that you enjoy around you is healthy. Um, some daily goals could be, um, and, and make them very specific too. I forgot to mention that part. So, you know, like I mentioned for the monthly, I'm going to the gym eight times a month. You know, you have that number. It's not just like, eh, when I have time, I'll go to the gym because and guess what? You're not going to have time. You're not going to make the time. Um, so then going to the daily goals could be something like, I'm going to get my eight to 10 servings of vegetables. Um, you know, if you're an adult woman, the max recommended daily amount of sugar 
for you is 25 grams of added sugar. So make that a goal. I'm going to stick to 25 grams of added sugar or less. Um, I'm going to get eight hours of sleep. I'm going to only spend an hour accumulating an hour um, on my phone. You know, certain things like that, but make them very specific. Make them something that even if it's a little challenging, that you know that you can accomplish them. It's also a really good idea to write down some possible obstacles, challenges, or barriers that you know you're going to come up with. We all have the obstacles, the barriers, the challenges that, that we know that are there that have gotten our way before. And you know, then there's some too that will come up that you didn't plan for. And that's fine, but when you're writing in your plan that you know that you're gonna have these barriers and you're prepared for barriers, you're prepared for the challenges. So make sure that you write those down as well and have an accountability buddy. So, you know, someone that's not going to let you flake out on your plan, someone that's gonna be a little tough with you. So that if you have those barriers that come up or if you have a day where you don't feel like doing whatever goal you set for yourself, your accountability buddy um, will say, uh, no, you need to do that thing because you said you were gonna do it, you told me you were gonna do it, you know, this is going to help you reach your goals, so go do it. Um, and then that will help you get past those barriers as well. Um, you could even kind of break down a plan to have that in place for those barriers. Um, don't try to be 100%. This is something that I struggled with when I first started. You know, I was all in, I experienced feeling better and I was loving it and I didn't want to feel bad ever again. So my plan was, you know, all day, every day, every single meal was going to be clean, you know, food and we were never going to go out to eat and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that became really, really unhealthy um, mentally and was causing problems with, you know, my family and friends and stuff. So, you know, don't try to be 100%, but do try to come up with a number um, like 80-20. So 80% of the time you're gonna be, you know, you know, on top of this, you're gonna be sticking to your plan. And then 20% of the time you're going to, um, you know, not really stick to your plan, but also not go too crazy. Like I said, you know, you're gonna go out for a girl's night and you're not going to, obsess over the fact that what you're eating and drinking isn't healthy because you're getting that social interaction and that kind of play time to enjoy yourself, which creates that healthy balance. So um, just come up with that number, 80-20, 70-30, 90-10, write that in your plan as well. Um, I start to notice your negative self-talk because this for everybody comes up. So, you know, journal in your plan, it'd be really cool to have it in a notebook. And then, you know, in the pages following your plan, use that as a journal and start to journal your negative self-talk. Like, um, you know, I suck at going to the gym. Um, I don't know. There's really a million things that could come up for negative self-talk and it's different for everybody. Um, so start to write those down and then of course have a plan on how you are going to stop yourself from being mean to yourself. So it could be something where, um, you know, you notice that those negative thoughts are coming up and you clap to kind of snap yourself out of it. If you don't wanna do something, you know, outward, um, you could kind of yell at yourself in your mind to stop it or to shut up. <laughs> That's something that I personally do. Um, and then, you know, as you're journaling that and you're kind of recognizing um, your negative self-talk and when it happens, then it becomes easier, one, to catch it early and two, to stop it. So another benefit to writing it down. Um, also in your journal, I love to do like a food and mood tracker, um, not just food and mood, but food, mood, and your physical feelings. So you're gonna write down everything that you eat and drink 
you're going to write down how you feel before and after um, physically and emotionally and just keep doing that and over time you're going to start to notice a pattern um, maybe there are certain foods that um, you know make you feel sad or certain people that you're around or certain situations that make you feel sad there's going to be certain foods that might give you gas or bloating um, you know there's just certain things that are really hard to piece together if we're not really 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 paying attention so doing that journaling will help you really um, you know pay attention to what your body's telling you and you'll start to connect the dots easier um, so I'm kind of curious to know what your long-term goals are. You know, if you could just have your best life ever when you're older, what does that look like for you? So if you want to share that in the comments, that would be awesome. And then if you've already developed some of those smaller goals to reach that bigger goal, include that as well. Um, if you're already practicing some of the tips that I mentioned, include that in the comments too. I'm curious to know what you guys are doing um, to plan to reach your goals. So then as you're going through your plan and you are reaching your smaller goals, I want you to celebrate. And there are tons of ways to celebrate. I like to call them non-scale victories because um, as I've mentioned in other videos and posts and such, um, you know, to me being healthy and having true wellness means so much more than what we weigh. And usually when we only have um, weight loss as a, as a goal, that usually keeps us in a really bad cycle. You know, we're looking for quick fixes and such um, just to get the weight down instead of, again, you know, planning for the long term and how to be truly, truly healthy and, and well. Um, so non-scale victories are, um, you know, you had energy all day today. You didn't hit that three o'clock slump. So you do a little happy dance in your, I don't know, your office or your kitchen or something. Um, I mean, there's tons of ways to celebrate. Also, that doesn't include food. So I know that a lot of people use food to celebrate and that's not the true intention of food. So come up with something else to do to celebrate your achievements and accomplishments. Um, you know, as always, if you need help coming up with health and wellness goals, if you need help coming up with a plan, if you need help sticking to your plan, that is what I'm here for. So you can feel free to message me or email me at brie at hippydippymom.com. Um, I'm also coming up with a healthy living planner. So it will have a bunch of these pages that I'm mentioning, like a food and mood tracker, a goal sheet, a monthly calendar, so you can really have one place to put all this stuff down um, and just have it easy, like ready, you know, at your fingertips when you need it. So I will post the link. It's not ready yet, so I have a wait list going, so I will post the link for that wait list. And again, make sure that you like, subscribe, follow all the things wherever you're watching. Um, so that's it for today. I hope that that helps you um, plan to reach your health and wellness goals. And I'm curious to know what steps you're taking to reach your wellness goals. Till next time, guys, take care.